This program is brought to you by Emory University. My name is Dr. Sarah Brown. I'm an associate professor at the School of Law, University of Leeds. I qualified as a solicitor in 1987 and spent a little time in practice before taking a long career break. I then decided to come into academia and I did a PhD which I submitted and passed in 2006 and I took up a career in academia and I've been at the School of Law ever since. My research interests are primarily in relation to consumer protection uh, and more specifically consumer protection in terms of financial services and taking out loans. I've been writing on vulnerability in relation to consumer credit issues for some time and uh, there was a workshop running in Leeds last year in July which caught my attention and I thought, oh, vulnerability workshop, that would be a good thing to come along and listen into. And it was really as a result of that I was completely taken by the arguments that were being made in that workshop and I could see that there could be some real correlation with the vulnerability theory with some of the arguments that I was trying to make in my own publications. Well, one of the problems that I was having with my research and my arguments was that um, consumer credit regulation, certainly in the UK, has some problems in that it never really achieves its goal and can quite often end up creating the same problem that it's trying to solve. And um, what vulnerability theory has done is allow me to understand why that is happening and maybe give some idea as to how we can address that problem. So the idea behind vulnerability theory being that uh, all humans are uh, universally uh, vulnerable and are in a constant state of vulnerability um, has a lot of correlation with the credit relationship which of itself exposes vulnerability. Uh, whether due to the inherent in inequality between creditors and debtors or whether the various other sort of internal and external factors that affect credit provision, um, behavioural economics, um, human behaviour, impulse, lack of self-control, external factors such as need, comfort, investment, all those things. Uh, and all, all those different factors might affect any of us at any given moment in time. And what the vulnerability theory helps me explain is that because consumer credit regulation, both in the UK and the US, tends to box vulnerability, for instance. So if we look at overcommitment to credit, it tends to be boxed in ideas of low income, poverty, mental uh, capacity. Then by doing that, all we basically do is create gaps where uh, consumers that don't uh, suffer from those susceptibilities might then find that, that they are exposed to a different form of detriment. So by allowing um, myself to view the consumer as a vulnerable at a more holistic level, it allows me to explore where those gaps lie and then think about how we can go about resolving them. Yes, the vulnerability theory has really made me um, think very carefully about how we can go about resolving some of these issues that arise as a result of regulation. Uh, and as I've said, the trouble with boxing consumers is that you will have a vulnerable consumer who is only seen as vulnerable either on low income, as I say, or mental capacity. There are other elements of consumer credit reg regulation that also suffer from that. So besides trying to protect against, for instance, overcommitment to debt, another form of uh, consumer protection is provided through information disclosure. But information disclosure also has problems because, again, it, it is sort of Im embedded in this idea of a consumer that's rational and that will maximise their utility if they're given the right sorts of information. And yet, as we've seen, too much information or information that you don't understand will not help you make um, a decision that is good for you in any, in any event. And so thinking about how we can resolve some of these things, I have thought about vulnerability theory's own response to that, which is this idea of building resilience. And it seems to me that um, policy 
has some idea that the best way to protect the consumer is to empower the consumer. So cons consumer empowerment is seen very much, in, again, in this idea of providing information and allowing consumers access to credit. But to me, consumer empowerment is about building resilience. But it's not just about um, providing a protection or, if you like, a defensive approach to consumer protection. But, but building resilience can also empower and enable the consumer. And so I think we should redefine consumer empowerment in terms of the vulnerabilities theory approach um, to the human condition. And in order to build that resilience, how do we go about that? Well, in order to do that, we need to think about other support besides regulation of the credit market and look to more social institutions to help the consumer to provide support before they enter into a credit agreement, but to provide the support to anybody who wants that support, not just consumers that fit into a particular box. Anybody who is thinking about their financial uh, condition or about um, arranging their finances should have um, uh, access to this particular type of support. As I say, whether through arranging their finances or debt advice or overcommitment to debt or, or anything else that may concern them in relation to their, to their finances. And um, it goes further than that because it is not just about providing those social institutions with state responsibility and support for those institutions. But also the argument allows us to look back at regulation of the market and say this does also justify some regulation of the market um, but less regulation because over-regulation doesn't work and we need a combined approach of state involvement and regulation of the market because after all in terms of the market credit institutions themselves are vulnerable as they are constituted by individuals who are subject to this universal vulnerability and that in then translates into the institu institutions themselves being vulnerable. So again, vulnerability theory allows us to justify regulation but at a level that will allow a balanced approach. When I first started looking at, at sort of this whole area, I thought it might be interesting to look at the UK credit market and the United States credit market because actually they seem very similar. We, we both have, although they're different in terms of size, um, we both have um, large and robust consumer credit markets. We also appear to have very similar regulatory frameworks. So we have the Financial Conduct Authority in the UK and you have the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau in the United States. However, starting to look at things in a little more detail, um, I am discovering that there are indeed some subtle differences between the two systems in terms of their approach to the vulnerability of the consumer and how they go about addressing that. And I think this is very interesting because whilst we have two very similar structures on the surface, what the comparison will allow us to do is, in comparing those two approaches, try, and try to assess which is the best way forward in terms of policy um, and how to take consumer protection forward um, through the lens of the vulnerability theory. Yes, I think so, and I would like to think that my research could change the direction of policy in relation to protection of the credit consumer, taking a more holistic approach that will allow for the changes in the consumer credit market. I have managed to develop my arguments um, in a way that I really didn't think of before I arrived here. It's made me really think very carefully about what I want to do with this research and has also opened new ideas to me. And more than anything else, the um, ability to do that has been through being able to talk to scholars in the Vulnerability and Human Condition in Initiative um, and has allowed me to discuss these various ideas and then expand on them and it's been extremely helpful.